Radhe Radhe. Good morning and good evening, everyone. Welcome to Daily Wisdom from Bhagavad Gita session. Radhe Radhe Nitinji, over to you. Radhe Radhe Pallaviji, thank you. And uh, thank you, Madanji and, uh, and uh, Sunil Bhai for a wonderful session like always. So Radhe Radhe, good morning, good evening, everyone. A very warm welcome to all of you to today's edition of Daily Wisdom from Bhagavad Gita. I'm excited to be back and look forward to another engaging and uh, fascinating you know, discussions that we always have. So let's get started. Um, if you are new, we would love to know about you. You, know, you can put it in the feedback tracker that is going to get circulated shortly or raise your hand. Uh, always a pleasure to hear from newer participants. And if you are you feel comfortable, please turn on your videos as well. Always helps to put faces to names as well. With that said, let's get started. I'm going to share my screen uh, and we will get started. Just a sec. All right. So we'll invoke the blessings of God and Guru to get started with today's topic that we are talking about desire. Uh, we have spoken about desire and now today we will go peel another layer on that. What is it that makes us succumb to all these desires and then how can we strengthen our mind to counter this perpetual enemy or perpetual allurements that we get through our senses? We'll talk about that topic as well. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwar Ha, Guru Sakshat Parabrahma, Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha, Vasudeva Sutam Devam, Kamsa Chanuramardhanam, Devaki Paramanandam, Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum, Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum. Radhe Radhe, a very warm welcome to all of you. See, we recite these shlokas. Um, we say that Guru is Brahma, Vishnu and Mahesh. And why we say that? Because Guru provides us knowledge. He maintains that knowledge, does the yoga shame, maintenance of our knowledge, and also destroys ignorance, okay, like Brahma, Vishnu, and Mahesh, respectively. And the second one, we invoke the blessings of the original Jagat Guru, Lord Krishna himself, through his Mukharvan, these words of Bhagavad Gita came out 5,000 years ago. And because of this message, all the doubts that a human being can have in whatever walk of life, they are at rest. And doubts are like demons. They become If they become powerful, they can slay our spiritual growth. And because we are able to dispel that doubts or the ignorance uh, emanating because of our, or because of born out of those doubts, uh, we are worshipping Lord Krishna, invoking his blessings who, who slayed the demon, you know, Chanur and Kans. And doubts are like demons only. So he's the one who's able to slay it. Because when we listen to Bhagavad Gita with the Shraddha, faith, then he sits in our, he's seated inside, right? But he becomes in our buddhi also and he solidifies that concept and makes our faith stronger. It's only through his grace we can understand this knowledge, not through our self-effort. Even towards the end of Bhagavad Gita, Arjun is saying, Tat Prasadat, with your grace now, my doubts have been dispelled. And I'm now, you know, I'm, I'm basically clear with regards to what I should be doing and why. So anyways, that was a quick context on that. So let's move on with the shloka that we are going to discuss today. And I'm going to recite it and you're welcome to follow along. Tasmatvam Indriyanyado Niyamya Bharatarshabha Pakmanam Prajahihenam Kyana Vigyana Nashanam All right, let's pick up a few hands for the shloka. Samji, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Tasma twam indriyanyadau niyamya bharatarshabha 
ಭರ್ತರ್ಷಭ ಪಾಪಮಾನಂಪ್ರಜಹಿಷ್ಯಾಷ್ಯಾಷ್ಯಾಷ್ಯಾಷ್ಯಾಷ್ಯಾಷ್ಯಾಷ್ಯಾಷ
Yeah, she, today is her second debut award. Okay, uh, she's already gotten it. But yeah, very very nice, Diva. I think she's the second time today. Awesome, and very Shyamji nice. Is, she was smiling away to glory. So yeah, great. Shamji is proud father. Yes, he's a proud father. All right, so let's get started. Um, in this uh, shloka, Lord Krishna is saying. Therefore, O best of the Bharatas, in the very beginning, bring the senses. So he's talking about desire. Now he's giving a remedy around it. So what he's saying, he's calling Arjuna as best of the Bharatas. In the very beginning, bring the senses under control and slay this enemy called desire. He's saying that, you know, the breeding grounds, he had already explained that, that senses are the breeding ground for this desire. So he said, if you control those senses itself, then you can slay this enemy called desire. And which is... He's referring to desire. Let's see how he's qualifying it. He's giving a few ad adjectives to it. He's saying it is the embodiment of sin and destroys knowledge and realization. So let's get started in today's discussion. So in this, see, you see that. Um, hope it's illustrative of how vulnerable we feel or powerless we feel in front of our desires. So these stones, falling stones, irresistible force, compelling desires, and our defense is as strong or as weak as this feather. Okay, this is typically how it goes when our desires come. Okay, we feel a little vulnerable and powerless in front of our desires. So today we're going to talk about why is our mind's defense usually weak against the non-beneficial desires and ge desires in general? What makes it weak <clears throat> and how can we strengthen it? We'll try to touch upon all these topics. So let's get started without much ado. So this is the desire. It's an embodiment of sin is what Lord Krishna is talking about, which destroys knowledge and realization. So when knowledge slips, even your realization slips at that moment, right? Realized knowledge is something that stays with you all the times. Because it is practically realized. But when the desire comes, we, we feel powerless in front of it. It is a very, very strong thing. So knowledge, of course, it slips. Why? Because desire form, forms a cloud around our intellect. Similar to anger, when there is a cloud around our intellect, then our discerning ability goes for a toss. And when our discerning ability goes for a toss, and discerning ability or intellect is the only thing that differentiates us from animals. When that goes for a toss, then we come to the animalistic sensory gratification level. So at that moment, when we are fulfilling our desire, there's no difference between us and animals at that point. Okay. So because uh, we are now just catering to our senses, which animals do as well. See, when, um, but as humans, Scriptures telling us, Bhagavad Gita repeatedly tell us, to whom much is given, more is expected. Right? There is a dialogue of uh, this Hollywood movie, Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. So, when you go to a bank, there is a manager who is sitting in his air-conditioned chamber, right, enjoying the perks of life. And then there is a teller who sitting outside may not have air condition and doing that mundane job. Now, if the manager says, I will also do the job of a teller, let's say in IT industry, you've got a CEO or a CFO. He has his own office and a desk room and stuff like that. And then there's a developer, poor guy who's just starting off, you know, a lot of cabins and stuff like that. Um, and they say, I need to do the job of a developer. If a CFO says, or let's say a manager says, I want to do the job of a teller. So then they say, okay, you do that. We will take all the perks away from you. Okay, you will not enjoy that special privilege of maybe getting a house or a car or an air conditioned stuff. All those privileges will be taken away. Why? Because that come with the job description of a manager because the job is of much more responsibility. Right? They are responsible for so many things, not just counting cash only. Similarly, as humans, right, we are having that privilege of that manager and if we say, no, I want to do the job of a teller, then God says, fine, but then I'll take that privilege away from you. May not happen immediately in this life, but in next life, there is no reason for us to get a human birth again. 
Why? Because all we have done is cater to animalistic tendencies only. That is the flip side of leading a life purely catering to our sensory ambitions alone. Right? There's no reason for God to give you the privilege like a manager or a CF, CEO or CFO enjoys. And that is why I say, Ahar bhai, maithun and nidra. Even animals too. And if we spend our life doing these four or five basic activities, which animals also do in a more deluxe way, you know, sitting on a, sleeping on a gadda or, or uh, you know, uh, having uh, all the safeguards that we build around us or enjoying a tandoori naan and paneer or whatever it is, um, it, it's not going to make much of a difference because end of the day, they're fundamentally the same activities, whichever animals do. So, so that is why scriptures tell us that you exercise that. Otherwise, the special privilege that is given to you will be taken away because now you have resorted to doing a job of somebody um, which is in the primitive stage of evolution, you know, with regards to spiritual. They don't have even intellect or, or a discerning ability at all. So when we have that ability, there is a price tag for it. And the price tag is to exercise it. So, and that is where um, we are going to talk about that catering to desire alone is not the sole purpose of life. Let's move on. So control is the key. Now we'll talk a little more about this topic. Now, Lord Krishna gives perfect and penetrating insight into functioning of the mind. Like I have, I have said multiple times that he's a master dietitian. He's a master psychologist. He's a master, uh, what do you call that, um, uh, physiologist. And, you know, you name it, he's he's the master of that. He's, he's actually going to the root of everything. So he's explained very beautifully in Bhagavad Gita. How does our mind function? He explained that when we... How, how does this uh, mind gets attached basically, right? So beautifully is explained. He says that when we repeatedly contemplate that there is happiness in some object, this is where this vicious cycle starts. So there's an object. You, you think it's going to give you happiness. Why you are seeking happiness is the reason for that. Nobody can desire misery. We have spoken about this concept. We have come from the ocean of bliss. So as fragmental parts, we are seeking the whole. So everybody has to seek happiness. Nobody can say, no, I will not seek happiness. Even an atheist is seeking happiness. And happiness is God. Bliss is God. So now everybody is seeking happiness. And what happens? You find an object in your life and you, your mind starts becoming attached to it. Now it could be prestige. It could be your material ambition. It could be some person. It could, could be acquisition of some material object. It could be anything. Because you are repeatedly thinking, it is going to give you some kind of satisfaction and happiness and joy and whatever you want to call it. Okay, this is where the cycle starts. So that thought has come. So let's see how it unfolds. So we'll take an example. Here is a boy and here's a girl in the school. Okay. Now in a class, there are a number of boys and girls. They interact innocuously with each other. It happens. But as a matter of fact, what happens is this guy thinks that I would be very happy if she were mine. Okay, this is the thought that starts. Okay, that is the inception of this whole cycle, how it's going to unfold. Now, this guy will continue thinking about it repeatedly. He'll continue to repeat this thought in the mind. Mind becomes attached. He tells his friends he's madly in love with her and he's unable to study because his mind repeatedly goes to her. Now, what has happened is your mind, you look at it, you have formed some neural channels there. The grooves are formed. It is said in our mind, even the modern science, if you go to neurologists and people, they would say that neurons that fire together, they wire together. So it is our brain is firing neurons. Okay, this object is going to give me happiness, 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 happiness. And until that grooves have formed. And now even without you thinking, those thoughts will start coming. Until it is a perpetual thought that you are living with, not even having to think about it. Now you are talking, living, breathing that thought without you having to put an effort. Why? Because these channels are already formed. Now because of which what happens? Let's see. Now he repeatedly thought there was happiness in the girl and so his mind became attached to her. Okay, so there was a reason why it became attached to her. And as a consequence, we know what happens and his friends on the other side, they will ridicule him. They may even ridicule him and say, what's going on here? You know, We also interact with the same girl, but none of them is crazy about her. 
why are you losing your sleep and ruining your studies because of her right and some people even go to the extent of writing letters and you know all that stuff but their friends the same object is not giving them the same happiness or that kick that this person is deriving from this particular person why because they have not repeatedly contemplated happiness in that so the happiness is not in the object happiness or that desire that you created is a very very uh, subjective thing it is something your inner mechanics of mind where you repeatedly thought 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 until it became an obsession or something for you where did it start from your own thought process did anybody plant it for you of course not why did you repeatedly think about it because you thought there is happiness could you have prevented it we'll talk about it okay so this is how it goes and this is just a very crude example same process the pattern repeats for us in different walks uh, different things in life it it's a very simple example but same thing happens why do we become upset right we say this is this is what my ambition is what i want need to get because this will define my success in life and this will define my happiness and that repeated pattern would would eventually lead us uh, to make it as an obsession and then finally either we'll get it or we'll not get it if we'll get it we need more of it if we don't get it we'll become upset and frustrated in the process if we have not implemented the science of work then we have degraded our sun scars also and that's something we have to anyway live with lifetime after lifetime so it's like the least we can do in this process is not digging a pit for ourselves which we have to climb over anyways right if not in this lifetime in some other lifetime and this cycle keeps on repeating for us for different things in life material things in life let's move on repeated thoughts so now how, how did this cycle unfold repeated thoughts that there is happiness in the girl it led to the attachment of mind and attachment of mind would eventually lead to desire as we have seen so let's move on so this is how the attachment goes you know the neural channels are formed with that particular object now attachment may seem innocuous some people may say it's okay i'm getting attached to somebody what's a big deal i get attached to gulab jamun rasgulla could be any object or anything what's the big deal in that but there is a problem what happens is that from attachment comes another problem which is called desire right so attachment leads to desire and then what happens we know that right desire either it will get fulfilled or it will not get fulfilled if it gets fulfilled it results in greed and if it is not fulfilled it results in anger how does it happen now if you look at cigarettes if one is attached to cigarettes thoughts of pleasure of smoking cigarettes repeatedly flow in the mind creating a craving for them same thing goes for drinking as well if one is attached to drinks the desire for drinks becomes repeatedly to the mind once it has become now it is an autopilot for you you don't have to put in an effort it will it will start mastering you you know the, when you try to own that object see it starts with the desire to own that object and soon thereafter the object starts owning you this is what happens right you can't live without that particular thing at that point because the object has started owning you and this is how the cycle unfolds now let's talk about it so here's a guy called ramesh let's see this process how it goes okay there's a guy uh, ramesh and then there's a guy called suresh okay they are both in hostel so let's look at their content meter okay i have created one for both green means they are all cool so contentment quotient for at them for both of them when they came back to college from college back to their hostel room was all right they were kind of peaceful okay probably they had a good day and uh, and you know the lecturer was also cooperative that day so they they are perfectly okay now what happens at 10 pm okay 10 10 maybe this guy develops ramesh this develops a desire to smoke cigarette now what happens look at his content meter it has come down okay it has come down for ramesh on the other hand suresh is he didn't have that desire is not habituated so he is he's the same way as he was so at 10 pm he started looking for a cigarette i just need a smoke now okay so he goes around the hostel knocks at other doors goes to the room where the smoke always keeps coming out but unfortunately nobody has it okay now the itch has intensified i just need it so then he picks up a bike 
goes to the station. Railway station is the spot where you get that, okay, in hostels. So everybody drives there either to have bread omelette or, or cigarettes, okay? That's anybody who has led in hostel life, they would understand that. Now he gets a bike and goes to the railway station and finds a smoke there. And at 12 p.m., he's able to finally find it after, you know, going around here and there. And after that, as soon as he has that, at 12 p.m., he's like, ah. Oh. Now what happened? He's, he's again back to the same state that he was before 10 p.m. So he created a sense of dissatisfaction, temporary dissatisfaction or an itch for himself. And regaining the same spot that he was in previously, now he's like, okay, I'm satisfied. So look at it. Did it truly make him happy? On the other hand, if you look at the content meter of Suresh, he did not develop that itch. So how he was at 10, he was at 12, and then he continued to be the same way. So fulfilling the desire, first of all, when we create a desire, we have created an itch for ourselves. And then when we eliminate that itch, we feel, ah, now it is fine. That is what happens typically. And people who don't have desire, they are content anyways. Right? In Navada Bhakti, which was relayed by Lord Ram to Shabari, one of the things that he's talking about is Santosh, contentment. People who are content will have peace. They are closer to peace. So this is how the process goes. So I hope that makes sense. So did you notice what really happened? So desire is actually a manufactured demand. You have manufactured it, a demand. It's, it's actually not needed more often than not. We create that. It's a manufactured demand, right? Like, for example, manufactured demand is the bottled water for say. You know, the water used to be portable. Now they have started selling water also. And soon, uh, even the air might start becoming, you know, costly by gallons. I think it has already started in China. It is a manufactured demand where you create a demand around it. And soon after that, you realize you cannot survive without it. Can anybody drink tap water anymore, even though it's portable for most, most part of US, I would tell you, but nobody. Because for us, water is bottled water here. Now at least here in the US. So it becomes, it starts becoming your consciousness. And that is how desires play with us as well. We look around in the world, everybody's chasing something. And that becomes a part of our desire system all by itself. Okay, But actually it is a manufactured demand because we have created a misery for ourselves until we fulfill that desire. And then what happens? Are we satisfied, happy after getting that desire? Of course not. And who said, uh, Oscar Wilde had said, there are only two disappointments in life, getting something that you desire and not getting something that you desire. In both cases, you will end up being disappointed only because it plateaus after a while. So this is how the cycle unfolds. Um, now, is desire natural or self-enforced? Anybody wants to quickly chime in for that before I get in further? Is it natural? Somebody say, of course, being human, we have to desire. Are you telling me to become a stone or a dead wood now? Yes, Preeti ji, you wanted to take uh, yes. Just taking a guess, uh, if in the case of an ignorant person, the desire, uh, I mean, where the intellect is not yet manifested, it would be self, I mean, it would be natural, but if the, I don't know, I'm not able to say it, but uh, uh, this is what, I mean, if one is ignorant, one wouldn't know how to control his desire. Whereas if one is not ignorant, his intellect is manifested, he would be able to, they would be able to control their desire. I am not able to distinguish between natural and self-enforced. That's why I've kept it a very open-ended question. Just <laughs> I'm not going to take any place here, but we will have a good discussion around this topic. Yes, Rahul, you wanted to say something? Rahulji, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. I think desire for happiness is natural, but desire mm. may I mean, creating those material desires for happiness in the material things is like self-enforced. So desire is natural, but for happiness, in which direction we want to seek that, that is our choice. Very technical answer. True, true that. Yes, Shyamji. See, I'm not spoken about any animals today, okay? So you can't fault with me today. And by the way, if Menaka Gandhi is listening to me, she'll be extremely happy. Okay? She is very happy. Radhe, Radhe. Yes. Desire, I think, as Rahul Bhai said, it is all, it is, uh, it depends on what we want at, at times. Yeah. So I guess it's mostly it is self self imposed, the natural. 
I think Rahul yeah. gave a very good answer. Yes, it's it's mostly I mean material desires we create because of our value system, erroneous value system, and stuff like that. We create it more more often than not, getting influenced by people around and you know what what we think is going to give us happiness actually. So yeah, it, most for most part it is self enforced, but the desire for happiness is very natural. Okay, mm-hmm. nobody can do away with that desire. Uh, yeah. We will seek happiness no matter what it is. Okay, we'll take uh, okay a couple of hands. Let's we can yes. take those. And then I move. Uh, there's an important slide I want to cover, so we'll have enough time. Yes, there's Rita Ji and then Abhishek. Rita Ji, Radhe Radhe, please go. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe, Rita Ji. Uh, it's very beautiful session. Uh, yeah, the next uh, the desire when you create the desire, like you know, it's uh, definitely enforced uh, for material things. And the natural desire is uh, towards the God, towards the bhakti, uh, which is not material, but devotional. Or, okay, I have a desire to to get more, like study more, understand more Gita. Or uh, I have a desire to see the God. Um, that is a natural. Mm-hmm. And also you can, that's enforced too, but it's my desire is not material desire. Um, so you can enforce those kind of desires that, okay, I like to see the God. I want to pray sure. or I want to meditate, uh, meditate oh, that, you know, a couple mm. of hours or extra hour time. So you can enforce, you know, enforce like that is a not material. It's a devotional desire. Basically, we can cultivate desires. We do have a control over cultivating desires. People who smoke, it's of course not very pleasant experience, right? Or who drink for the first time, but then they persist. Why do they persist? Because they find everybody else seems to be happy. So it, there must be some kind of a happiness. So when they persist with their perseverance, willpower, they one day they conquer that and then they start enjoying it, right? So same thing happens on the path of spirituality as well. You have to persist because devotees are in bliss. So take inspiration from them. Saints have been in bliss. Take inspiration from them, persist, sail through that phase and see the bliss that you can enjoy afterwards. Same thing, same principle applies on the path of spirituality. See, it says that the spiritual rush will seem bitter. Not bitter because your mind will complain. Yes, I know the parties and potlucks are much more fun. You know, we're seeing some tangible fun going on there. What this is this stuff. But it is like taking the sh- sugarcane juice when you have jaundice. What do you do then? You keep on taking it. It will seem bitter. Sugarcane juice will seem bitter. Is the fault? You can you fault with the juice? No, you can fault with your sense, which is defective because of jaundice. Then what is the cure? You keep on taking it. So it will not only cure the jaundice but also reveal its true taste. Same thing happens with bhakti, devotion, spirituality as well. You keep on taking. You double the dose. You say it doesn't work for me. Double the dose. Double doesn't work. Triple the dose. It will start working for you and also start giving you the benefit of it. May take a little bit of time, but eventually it has to. So that is how it goes. Yes, Abhishek. Let's hear from Abhishek. Radhe Radhe, Abhishek Ji, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe, Abhishek. Uh, Radhe Radhe, Nitin Ji. Uh, if I remember my school days, especially on standard, so the moment we start getting, uh, which we feel like, okay, so we are getting importance from the other person, then the contemplation of happiness comes so strongly. And at that moment, we need to be careful that, okay, we need to, uh, have two or three gems of wisdom in our armory so we can fight at that time right like we smile out of nowhere and game over so in that situations we need to be very careful so yes that's unfortunately, I yeah. unfortunately when we are most vulnerable stage of our life you know growing up teenage years and stuff like that we don't have this wisdom people mm-hmm. who get it they're able to you know align their lives early on people who don't get it you know, we learn it the hard way, you know, uh, or getting extremely lucky if we come across uh, a mentor like Swamiji, right? Uh, but yes, in, in that sense, um, and those are the years where, which are the formative years for us. And that's when we are at the peak of our thought process. And, you know, and that's where we err, most of the people err as well, right? Some people wake up when they're 25, some 30, some 35, and some don't wake up at all, or they refuse to wake up for the rest of their lives, right? So, Fortunate ones are the ones who come across right knowledge and then um, channelize it accordingly. So let's move on. So desire, natural sense, who has gone back to that topic. Desire, firstly, desire for material advancement is a great waste of time. Okay, that's what scriptures say. 
if your focus is only material ad advancement thinking spirituality is a long shot it's a waste of time okay end of the day you'll be still there where you started off with maybe even worse off because if you have not understand the principles material ambitions without properly channelizing your thoughts and efforts could actually degrade you it may give you temporary material accolades but in long run it is like poison because if you have not done it in proper consciousness you have contributed to more binding karmas and degraded your sanskars as well and secondly even at the peak you will still not have that aha thing that you hoped you would have we can see some examples you know even people like bill gates and all very few people get this opportunity to reach the peak pinnacle or the zenith of materialist pursuits a person can have and even after reaching the peak they realize okay there's still the sense of dissatisfaction and they start giving it back okay they pick up philanthropic ambitions those kind of things because that satisfaction is still not there and our scriptures say all the way up to brahma lok it is not there even if you become an emperor of celestial abodes forget about president of earth indra is also dissatisfied so material ambitions basically if your target is to make spiritual progress may not be in one lifetime even if it is across lifetime end of the day they become a great waste of time now if god has to pick you up to get something big done whether it's a nobel prize or maybe unifying the world through windows he'll pick you up anyways we still continue to work on ourselves but um, keeping at the back of our mind because spiritual quotient when we talk about the first aspect of spiritual co developing spiritual quotient is personal mastery knowing about your true identity as a soul and knowing the lower nature of yourself and higher nature and how you are different from both then comes your uh, universal awareness that you are a weight you know you are not insulated from the rest of the world covid being a classic case then comes your self mastery and then comes your professional mastery so when you develop spiritual quotient automatically you will grow in all the three all the four areas and as a consequence we may end up getting picked by god to get something big done even for this world but purely living in a consciousness to you know achieve material things and discarding spirituality or having it take, letting it take a back seat is usually a waste of time end of it so it's important to develop both and keep on progressing secondly it's an endless chase that is what our scriptures say it's a mirage it's an endless chase in developed countries few people are deprived of enough to eat and we are yet they remain disturbed this is because of their hankering is still unsatisfied so if you see how many western people after reaching the peak of materialism they turn towards oriental philosophy that's where they get peace of mind right beatles you look at beatles and so many people who have turned towards oriental philosophy because peace of mind they didn't get this guy elvis presley he would he used he had fame money adulation everything are knocking on his feet but what happened lack of peace of mind he would pop in a pill on friday get knocked off until monday perform again and again go to sleep michael jackson he did not even need sleeping pills won't work for him he would have to take an nl uh, what he called anesthesia uh, you know to calm his mind and even to go to sleep so these material pursuits there are enough examples to say they don't take us very far even though they look very lucrative that this thing will give me happiness truly it doesn't i see so many people um, you know in executive positions they uh, i don't know they they are basically mental wrecks at, at one stage okay unless they have some spiritual grounding the way they roam around it's like okay it's better not to be there because one of the biggest bliss that god has given sleep that is also they become deprived of that right always in stress and struggling in their personal relationships and high on dope and stuff like that so point here is it's fine to have that as as it continue organically we continue to progress but then this is something which can tire us without giving us the satisfaction that we are seeking that is the key thing so imagine this sentry pdc okay let me move it as well now it has become live if it is suffering from arthritis what will happen right i've given this example you see how much painful it is will will it will be for it and that is because it has just too many limbs and that is why when we keep on adding desires to our mind it becomes so much of misery that we are adding cigarette could be one alcohol could be other you know person could be third thing pursuit could be something we are just adding limbs like this are uh, this particular centipede and those desires will eventually start tormenting us in our mind so if this you know you were to give a suggestion to this uh, centipede you would say how would you reduce your pain first reduce your limbs okay that will automatically start reducing your pain 
and richest man in the world is as scriptures say they who possess the wealth of contentment possessed one of the biggest treasures of life so it's not about adding riches that is going to add to our content contentment quotient but reducing our desires that will add to the content because they don't take us far it is like putting fuel to fire and all the way up to indralok brahmalok satyalok pitrilok uh, you know seven celestial abodes the same problem will persist because our soul is need, needing something much bigger right so and which is infinite ever fresh and unlimited basically and ever increasing that is the sukh it is looking for so our desire trying to fulfill our desire is it's a it's a zero sum game basically never going to happen is what our scriptures are telling us now let's look at it we spoke about this concept that compelling desires they overpower us and our defense against it is the strength of our mind usually falls short so how does this principle work let's look at it and then we'll open it up so we have our mind there is our mind here is our mind right so either you you can make it stronger or you can make it weaker your choice is always there okay now when you fulfill your desires you are actually making it weaker okay just remember that next time and when you are actually exercising discernment then you are making it stronger this is how it will go this is the principle so if you want to give muscle to your mind then you bring in your discerning ability is it really good for me okay is it actually going to help my soul or my body all the scriptural gyan you start bringing around the choices that you make in your day to day life people do that effective people successful people do that they bring their discernment to their profession and a lot of other things that they do you ask uh, virat kohli you know does he enjoy paneer naan and all that stuff that people do no he leads a life of austerity to an extent that he would deny all those simple pleasures that people go for just to increase his shelf life as a sportsman that is the austerity he is willing to pay for excellence if you ask hema malini she would have one jalebi i have heard on jalebi that to on diwali that to half of it she can resist sugar to such an extent just because to increase their longevity and because they have to look good attractive right being being the position that they are in but they are willing to put in that that much of austerity and deny their senses to an extent which for us it seems very implausible right but people do that even uh, who want to succeed in life and who have a very strong why as to why they want to do it so the point is every time we succumb to our desire without even discriminating or putting bringing in our intellect into the picture we are making our mind weak and every time we exercise discernment we are giving our mind some muscle so choice is always with us are we empowering our intellect or are we weakening it every time we have that choice okay so it's it's say give muscles to your mind and give mind to your muscles so when you do strength training you are giving mind to your muscles so even though when you are not exercise your muscles are doing some activity at that point right and that is why strength training is important and this strength strength training that i'm talking about is about using this in every decision making that muscle to the mind is very helpful now you are building muscles for your mind which is going to help us big time in long run until it becomes a habit so initially denying is like exerting your will power but after you you know invest your will power you need your investment of will power only until it becomes a habit after that you don't have to do anything you don't you just don't have a craving for that so that part has to be invested until it becomes a habit so investment of our discerning ability to make it a habit is the key to success in life all right now i'll open it up for any questions that you may have sam ji radhe radhe please go ahead radhe radhe nitin ji all those people who are suffering from sleep problems are they all is it because they are all after material pursuits no no insomnia can happen because of now the doctor would be sitting here they say what are you talking about here i don't know but people who have a lack of peace in their mind typically suffer from sleep problems who have a lack of peace usually 
Having said that, there may be some other medical reasons for people who are insomniac. Okay, so there may be cause and effect, but doesn't necessarily mean that there is only reason for that. What I'm trying to tell here is that people who, when we think that material things are going to give us happiness, peace and stuff, it's, it actually works just the opposite. As you keep growing, you, you know, unless you have spiritual strength and resilience that you have built in, you will be lost because it's a wild goose chase. And more often than not, you will see people becoming mental wrecks, okay, towards the later part of their uh, lives. Because they don't and know how to handle fame. They don't know how to handle adulation. And, and they don't know what to do once they have reached the peak of their fame because you can't maintain it. In material thing, when you do shram, the result is more shram. In English, when you do put in effort, what you get in return is more effort, need for more effort. That is how it works in material world. Have you seen anybody who was enjoying a cup of coffee after getting to higher positions? Of course not. More responsibility, more stress and all that stuff. So shram ka fal shram in material world. Uh, and but, still we are, I will not add that. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, in spiritual world also it's the same, right? If we are using, putting more efforts in service, God will give us more responsibilities, more, more, uh, more capacity, that, more efforts. If you actually get into Seva world and stuff, you will realize it becomes a blissful experience. Yeah. Working for God is the best employment one can have. Okay. And he's he's not like a CEO who's going to basically not give you the things that you need in order to be effective. That happens. It's a matter of realization. You can and you can't get that thing in return for and no matter who you are working for in this world. Okay. And it becomes easier with time. Trust me. It's not difficult with time. It becomes easier with time. Okay. People in Brahma Loka, what, what, do, do, what do they aspire for? Uh, you said like until Brahma Loka also, their souls are not content. Yeah. What do they have? Brahma Loka is like the highest strike. Right? of Brahma, they... president of Brahma Loka, why not? Indra aspires for that. They might be aspiring for it as well. Okay. Yeah, seat of Brahma is very coveted, right? When you become Brahma, because of all the duties that you have performed, it's a very high visibility and high job description, right? You have to do the entire creation. So Brahma Ji is one of the biggest devotees of God. And Brahma Ji is a Jivatma, like you and I. We can also become Brahma Ji. Having said that, there are times when Brahma Ji's post, uh, there is not a suitable jivatma who can take brahma ji's post and that's when god takes on the form of brahma as well by the way brahma ji is not worshipped there's a story for that maybe some other day there's only one temple of brahma ji in the world which is in pushkar rajasthan and i've been to that temple okay so um in brahma up to brahma lok which is also called satya lok which is the peak of material um, you know possibility that a soul can go into there is still dissatisfaction. And from Brahma Lok, you can still become an ant or that centripede that I showed you. That is the biggest problem. It's mm -hmm. not like after Brahma Lok, you'll at least become Indra or at least become president of earth. Nothing of that sort. You can still become an ant or that centipede or a pig or whatever. And that cycle continues. Until we have made God a priority, of course, or attained Nirvana or God realization. Brahmanand, Brahmanand, one of these two. Okay, any more questions? Annapurna ji, Radhe Radhe. Annapurna ji, you are audible. Yeah, you know, I just want the previous, uh, uh, you know, uh, like, <coughs> you know, the, the, yeah, I have to take a screenshot, just a preview. Okay, no worries. Sure, this one you're talking about? No, no, uh, yeah, this one, this one is the one. Yeah, I just want to read it and, uh, you know. Sure. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's Boy. all. Thank, thank you, you Anapurna for waiting. Thank yeah, you. yeah. Meanwhile, um, uh, I request everyone to fill in the feedback tracker. I have yes. posted the link in the chat. Please put your questions. Please mark your attendance. Please add your comments, feedback, questions in the feedback tracker. And if you are interested in any Seva uh, opportunities, joining Seva teams, please do fill in uh, your uh, uh, all the information in the feedback tracker. Thank you so much. Yeah, and you can simply say Radhe Radhe or hello as well. Okay, so 
simply say radhe radhe and hello in the feedback tracker right so the happiness i was talking about it it our scriptures say yo ve bhuma tat sukham i need infinite bliss and until that until i get that infinite bliss soul will say i need more it will keep complaining it will keep throwing tantrums even after brahma lok so why why even go through that arduous journey and realize it after millions and billions and trillions of years why not now make a resolve that what saints are telling us you know let's align to that understand that and start growing spiritually spiritually and aligning to this path uh, so that uh, no matter when we reach the goal at least we are becoming freed from our mind and start enjoying the bliss um, along the way uh, you know in the journey itself um rather than short selling ourselves saying no 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 that's a big goal high goal uh, let me just enjoy material world only material world is not running anywhere you know it's it's always going to be there until we become god realized so de facto it's always there and uh, uh, you know maharaj used to say that uh, we have been gambling on this material world for so many lifetimes and bade bade log they they play satta they gamble why not gamble on god for a change world is not running away anywhere play a gamble and see what happens and when i say gamble you don't have to do anything drastically different all you have to do is to start aligning to the spiritual principles and see how it benefits you empowers you and makes you a better person and makes you more effective professionally personally in all walks of life and mm-hmm. whether your joy satisfaction and peace quotient is increasing or decreasing that itself is a big testimony for uh, you know what you are doing whether it's right or not till because proof is in the pudding Yes, Sandhya, you had a question too. Please go ahead, Sandhya ji. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Um, uh, actually, not a question, but um, uh, something that you mentioned. I think I you already said it, but I wanted to reiterate. Uh, mm-hmm. shram in material world leads to more shram. However, in the case of spiritual world, especially in the case of seva. bliss leads to more bliss so it keeps on increasing exponentially with time right and and that is something we experience every day in bhagavad gita class <laughs> so the spiritual yeah. party i look forward to now you just you don't have to look far ahead i mean you can just trust me on this i i had no clue how i will do this but now i look forward to it every day and when i don't have this session i feel i'm not very productive at work also it just happens god makes it so smooth you know it it seems like oh my god how is it possible this but you have to just sail through that initial period and if you sail through that then magic will start unfolding somehow it starts happening i mean it's difficult to explain how because we think it you know it takes time when you have to do this and that but it somehow happens automatically and the bliss starts increasing you realize it every day and no matter how hard the day has gone by in that office this one hour is completely rejuvenating therapeutic and for me the mind becomes so active after the session i have calm it down to sleep after a while so and it just happens every day right seems a little difficult i mean um, it doesn't make sense right how do you manage it tato but it just happens i don't know how it happens it happens that's it it will continue hopefully Yeah, so and you said proof is in the pudding. So I guess experience. Proof is in the pudding. We have to sail through that. See, the mm-hmm. coefficient of uh, static friction is very high in physics. They say we are not able to overcome that initial inertia. But once we are past that stage, and the ball has started rolling, it just goes on and on and on, and it starts building momentum. Right? A snowflake. It starts like a snowflake. Swami Ji was giving that example, and then that snowball effect. They say. So after a while it becomes a glacier and it becomes unstoppable so if you have to experience that pick up a save and see the magic unfold but we have to continue and persist at least for the initial phase and sham ji is going to send out a message to selfless team now to pick up the seva the video seva that we are going to talk about tomorrow more in more detail and now all the seva captains you need to reach out and then get it going yes yeah and and i mean with respect to this we would like people to also share their experience i know some of them have already started putting their stories it would be great if they want to you know share their experience with everyone and encourage them yeah. 
Okay, any announcements before we move further? Because uh, I think mm -hmm. we have to make some Pallavi ji, some announcements as well, and then we can. Yeah. We can Thank you, Nitin ji. If I can take hands. a, yeah, I can take uh, a quick minute. Yeah, please. For announcements, so first announcement is about Swamiji's world tour, uh, US tour going on. So I'm going to post the upcoming events, uh, Swamiji's upcoming events in the chat window. Uh, but uh, I would like to really mention that from May 6th to May 10th, the upcoming uh, tour of Swamiji mm -hmm. is in um, California, Sunnyvale. That is Sunnyvale Hindu Temple, uh, San Jose, California. So whoever is residing in California, a great, great, great uh, chance, golden opportunity to meet Swamiji. Uh, so please do uh, avail it, do not miss it. And um, West Coast uh, Retreat with Swamiji is going to be there uh, from May 27th to May 29th in, um, in Fresno, California. I'm going to put the details over here. So uh, this is going to be Again, I repeat, it is May 27th to May 29th in the West Coast. This is the West Coast retreat with Swamiji. Apart from that, family camp is also going to be there. And uh, that is from 4th July. And I'm going to put the um, information in the chat window. So please, please, please do take uh, advantage of all the retreats and the events going on here. Thank you. Thank you, Paluji. And Swamiji has... Uh... LTP program st starting in Seattle from 29th through March 5th, I believe. So if you are in or around Seattle, if you are working in Amazon, Microsoft, Boeing, um, or you know you want some of your friends, please tell them to come there. It's going to be an awesome LTP program and I'll be going there as well. So I'll be Is watching. that April 29th? Um, yes, April 20th, 29th, I think it's starting. So I'll be traveling there as well. Awesome. Um, Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, my only worry is uh, session thing, but I'll figure it out um, soon enough by sat Saturday if sessions are possible or not, but I'll let you know in advance. Uh, mostly they will be, but I'll have to still work out the logistics around it. So do check it out. If you are around Seattle, please attend that program. It's going to be an awesome program. Uh, there mm -hmm. is an uh, LTP program. So just wanted to let you know about that as well. Okay, Himangini ji, sorry, uh, you were there. I think we missed your hand. If you're still there, uh, please. Uh, yes, please yes, raise your hand, Himangini ji, so that I can uh, unmute you. I saw your hand and then we went into announcements. So we can take your question or remark that you had before we move further. Himangini ji, you're there. Uh -huh. I can see, I don't see her. I have unmuted Am I un you. Um, how oh, do yes. you explain this energy? Um, the after class or satsang that you're feeling on on the high. How do like you classes for me are very early morning. Sometimes I don't manage to go back to sleep because of the buzz. But what's, what's the science behind that? It's a good sign, right? It's a good sign. You derive a lot of energy. I know that. See, it's a divine. <laughs> God has put in his uh, chitta shakti in this knowledge. So when we, even if we get a slight trace of it somewhere, it is very empowering. And I, you know, that can happen. It just takes our mind to a different energy level altogether. And that's why if you sit in a satsang, that vibe and that verb is so high that uh, it, it, you, you can just experience it. You can't really articulate it. But I'm, I'm glad you're able to attend it. I think it must be 3 a.m. or something like that in UK. It's 4. I'm preparing dinner in between looking at the screen but i'm listening at the same time but I'm, so you I'm you are doing dinner eight, going it's 3 a.m so no PBM, four it is pbm oh. basically not paneer butter masala but pre brahma murat which is pretty amazing very nice and oh. I'm, I'm glad you shared that yes there, there are certain vibes you feel when you go through this knowledge and which is a good sign so i'm, I'm glad you're it's able throughout to... the day it's not just the moment it's throughout the day even better even better very nice thank you for sharing that okay. manisha ji i see you after. <coughs> very nice thank you for turning on your video today uh please go ahead 
I I I really like your um, you fill in the feedback tracker fairly regularly. So thank you for that. And yes, please go ahead. What's your question? Radhe Radhe Manisha ji, please go ahead. Yeah, there are there, everyone. Uh, it's a very general question. Like uh, some people went to sleep early in the morning. Uh, they have the tendency to uh, stay awake the whole night and went to sleep uh, early in the morning and they get good sleep in the morning hours. So we will count them as sleep deprived people or... <laughs> Nishachar. We are called Nishachar. Okay, we have if we change our circadian clock. I'm not the one, but yeah. I don't know. I think people I used to do that a lot when I used to study, you know, late nights and all that stuff. But playing around with our circadian clock is usually not good. You know, we yeah. are messing up. Usually with our college body. students, they college yeah, kids, students they do, do that. that. Yeah. And Brahmaji has given us a body which is very resilient up to a certain age. But if you continue doing that, it will start showing its effects because when the sun is at the peak, that is where your jathar agni basically in your body is at the peak of its digestive powers also. So uh, we have to follow the circadian clock as per the sun cycle if we want to have a good health in long run. And demons are the one who become powerful at night. You know this Ghatotkach sun, Ghatotkach sun, yeah, what was his name? Babri sun. Or Ghatotkach, in fact, not Babri sun. He, you know, Ghatotkach also, he became very powerful in the night and during Mahabharat, the rule was nobody would attack each other camp in the night and he started killing these people left, right and center until Karan had to use his special weapon that he had reserved for Arjun. So demons get very active and, you know, so it's not usually good to do that. Um, as students, it's okay, but as we grow up, uh, I think it's better to align to the uh, circadian cycle as opposed to you know having this a habit especially people who play games or watch movies and stuff like that after a while they continue with this habit but it's not good for our health as such and definitely not for spirituality because it becomes tamasic at that point i told them but they said uh, they are uh, their mind works better in night and they can work <laughs> better <laughs> I know, I know. So we can't I'm enforce, confused. enforce that to anybody, but the day they will have an awakening or their body will say no, then they might. But yeah, generally this is how it goes. But I see a lot of people, even corporate people who work late night and that happens. Uh, but generally, spiritually speaking, uh, the sattva is higher in the morning hours. And if you miss the bus for sattva, where your mind can be, you know, harnessed for good things, and we are not aligning to that, you know, regular our body cycle. It's it's not good for our um, uh, physical health as well down the line. But, yeah. but but sometimes it happens with me if I'm uh, watching some uh, Radha Krishna videos or something like that. I just uh, uh, can't sleep. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's okay. It <laughs> happens to me all the times. I don't know. The very few evenings where I'm able to sleep around 10, 30 or 11. After the session, mind is so active and then you need a little bit of, a, not the actual tranquilizer, but to calm it down and sleep. So it happens to me all the times. Uh, I try to get up as early as I can, 5.30, 6, 6.30 sometimes. But it, it happens all the time. Brahma Mugat is also my target, but I don't know when. I mean, Gita sessions probably I'll have to do it at 7 in the evening in that case, but that's not going to happen, so... But it's okay. I think yeah. we all have their own trajectory and sanskars to whatever works for anybody, right? And mm -hmm. we all learn at our own pace only. So, But thank you. Good to hear from you, Manisha, for the first mm -hmm. time. And I'm glad you were able to turn on your video. Always pleasure to hear, read your comments. Uh, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Manisha. Ji. Um, and I look forward to meeting you, by the way, in Delhi, okay, along with Payalji. Okay. I'm, I'm so excited for that trip. <laughs> we are also very excited to meet you. Yes, Prashantaji, last one, and then we move to devotional segment. Actually, we have already entered the devotional segment, maybe a couple of bhajans. But Prashantaji, real quick, you had some question. Prashantaji, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe, Agape and uh, Ilya. Ilya. Right. I, I understood that. Yeah, I, I was, I'm really sorry because that day I had an emergency, so I had to go. So sorry for that. 
Okay, so my question was literally about incorporating that, and you said it will make a bit of trace there, you know, a kind of trace, a, a kind of dag, let's say, in that. So I was a bit confused about that. So why, what is wrong, you know, in incorporating all the three? Nothing is wrong, basically. The point here being that if we have to become selfless, you have to be, get to agape. If you want to continue to be selfish or a mixture of selfless, selfish, conditionally, selfless and stuff like that, so be it. That's our choice, right? No, no, it's not about being selfish. You know, Eros, is that selfish? I don't, as we have mentioned, I don't think that is selfish. Every, you are seeking your self uh, uh, gratification only. As the well as the others. Period, the test is the day that is in period, the mm -hmm. day that is in period, you will, you will basically discard that person. Okay, you will lose that feeling. I'll give you a simple example. What if two people are madly in love? Okay. Mm -hmm. And the girl next day wakes up as an 85 year old. Mm -hmm. If the feelings are going to be same or not? Of course, that is a, you know, that is like a chal, you know, that is like a bhut. Of course, <laughs> feeling will be different <laughs> because that was, because that the picture was not honestly at the first place. Conditional. No. No. That means it was conditional, right? No. No, it's not conditional because that there was dishonesty at the first place. No, it not dishonesty. I mean, something happens. There is there are things that can happen, right? Power movie you have seen. Amitabh Bachchan, he became so old in such a young age. There is a disease called. If the other person okay. for some reason wakes up at 85 enough, years old, enough. there's no dishonesty. The it just happens. Disease is there, right? Disease is there. Something happened. It is not that she presented as 25 years old and the second day she is 90 years old. You know. So it, that is, is, it is attached to a condition with that person. Uh -huh. Selfless love is good rahitam, kamana rahitam. Basically, it's a very advanced, agape is a very advanced concept. Where you exactly. don't love I, somebody I, I do for their physical attributes or any other thing. You, you dissociate with that. Okay. And that's okay. when, so the true definition of true love is when there is a reason for it to get destroyed and still it uh -huh. does not get destroyed. Okay. I, I get you. Now, Talking about rising spiritually, you know, the, you know. Okay, I don't know. At this point, only Prashanta ji has to leave. So some call has come. Let's move to our devotional segment. Who's uh, going to, um, I, uh, do we have anybody? I, I can do a few lines, but uh, I see a couple of hands. ILG is there already. Who else is there? But you can do it. Manisha is going to Man sing. Wonderful. So we're going to get two debut award, no, debut award again today. Very nice. Please go ahead. I think we'll we'll start with you only then. We'll start with Manisha ji. Are you ready, Manisha ji? We have All see right. you are one of our four sister duos we have on our session, right? Four from there. So yes, Manisha uh, ji, go ahead. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Uh, well, um, this is my first time ever I'm singing. First of many times it's gonna be okay. So please go ahead. I got the inspiration from my sister. <laughs> please, please. Pleasure is all ours. It's not bhajan, it's a song. I sure. Every day I uh, listen to this. <laughs> so. Krishna hai vistar yadi tu saar hai raad. कृष्ण की हर बात का आधार है राधा राधा बिना कृष्ण नहीं कृष्ण बिना नहीं राधा जिस कण में राधा बसी उस कण में बसे हैं कृष्ण सदा से राधरा धरा धरा धा कृष्ण 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 है बंसी दुराधा तान मत वाली कृष्ण है श्रेष्ठा दुराधा श्रेष्ठ है सारी कृष्ण बिना 
राधा का हो ना कहा संभव है कृष्ण यदि परमान तो राधा सब है सदा सेरा धरा 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 धा कृष्ण 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 शब्द है कृष्णा तो उसका अर्थ है राधा कृष्ण की शक्ति और सामर्थ है राधा कण 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 में है राधे कण 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 में कृष्ण है ये ही परम तृप्ति है बाकी सब तृष्ण है जग मेरा धरा 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 धर कृष्ण 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 की हर रोम में हे राधिका प्यारी राधा के तन मन में बसती कृष्ण बनवारी राधा के अधरों पर कृष्ण का है नाम सदा एक दूजे में दोनों पाते हैं विश्राम सदा युग से राधरा धरा सॉरी नो वरीज नो वरीज दैट्स ओके you did very really well manisha ji for your first time and that's okay it's a beautiful song um i know it comes in radha krishna serial yes so this is one of my favorite ones along with the other tu tum preet ho there's another one right yeah. thank you for doing that uh, i know you became a little um, bhavuk <laughs> emotional um, take your time that's perfectly okay you are with a very cozy family here so perfectly okay um you still took the gumption to complete it and you know continue with it so thank you so much for that take your time no worries and thank you again you get the debut award regardless okay not only for your beautiful singing but for all the bhavs that you brought to this song thank you from the bottom of our heart very good thank you very much you can do it again okay no worries you can do it again but thank you again thank you manisha ji manisha ji thank you so much manish ji yesterday the other day you could not so please go ahead uh, yeah. you want to manish ji radhe radhe please go ahead radhe radhe so thank this you. is a stuti oh sorry no 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 please go ahead go ahead oh mm -hmm. this is a stuti to god um you know uh, just to say thank you for everything and to forgive forgive us for our sins it's a old prakna in gujarati that sure. they sing in schools and stuff um and but it's really really uh i love it so i'll just sing it but let me uh, send you guys the english version translation so is a uh, is the chat open or like is it yes. co host yes it is yes. oh it is okay let me copy and paste real quick sure Let me know if it came through. It should be fourteen lines. No mm -hmm. issue. Yeah, it came through. Thank you. You got it. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity. So I'll just say. 
सवर भजिए तने मोटू छे तुझ नाम गुण तारा नित गाइए थाय मारा काम हेत लावी हसावत सदा राख दिल साफ भूल कदी करिए अमे तो प्रभु कर जो माफ प्रभु जी एट लू आप जो कुटुंब पोषण थाय भूख्या कोई सुवे नहीं साधु संत समाय अतिथि जा को नव पड़े आशिष ना दुबाय जे आवे ममांगणे आशिष दे तो जाय स्वभाव ए वो आप जो सऊ इच्छे अमीर शत्रु इच्छे मित्रता पड़ोसी छे प्रीत विचार वाणी वर्तने सवनो साचो सखा स्ने मित्र नु इच्छु कुषण श्यम जो वा आपी आकड़ी सांभवा ने कान जीब बनावी बोलवा बलू करियु भगवान तो सवर तू एक छे श्रजो ते संसार पृथ्वी पाणी पर्वत की दा तैयार तारा सारा शोभिता सूरज ने वड़ी सोम ते तो सगड़ा ते रचिया जबरू तारू जो अमने आप ज्ञान गुण ते नो तू डा तार बोले पापी प्राणियो ते तारो उपकार काप कलश कंकास ने काप पाप परिताप काप कुमति करुणा की जे काप कष्ट सुखाप ओ सवर भजिए तने मोटू छे तुझ नाम गुण तारा नित गाइए Thank you for the opportunity. You very nice, uh, Manishi. It it see, sounded like some chalisa, right? Yeah, like Hanuman chalisa. Yeah, it's a it's a prarthna in Gujarati. Yeah, Gujarati. it's like a, it's a prarthna in Gujarati. They do it in all the all the schools. Wonderful. So, very nice. It's, it, it's a it's a thanking God for everything. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank Manish, you for the opportunity for bringing it to our session. Thank you. And uh, you know for the beautiful rendition that you did. Thank you again for that. Okay, quite a few Thank hands you. now. So Sandhya ji, good to see you back. Maybe we can have Sandhya ji and then Payal ji and then Deyashini is there as well. So quite a few hands today. I think we can cover by ten thirty. Sandhya ji, welcome back to the session. You wanted to sing as well, and then Payal ji, I mean yeah. first we can. Sandhya ji, please go yeah, ahead. Radhe Radhe, everyone. Thank you so much. Achutam Keshavam Krishna Damodaram Ramana Rayanam Janaki Vallabham Achutam Keshavam Krishna Damodaram <coughs> रामनारायणम जानकी वल्लभम कौन कहता है भगवान आते नहीं तुम मेरा कीजे से बुलाते नहीं कौन कहता है भगवान आते नहीं तुम मेरा कीजे से बुलाते नहीं अच्युतम केशवम कृष्ण दामोद रम राम नारायणम जानकी वल्लभम कौन कहता है भगवान काते नहीं बैर शबरी की जैसे खिलाते नहीं कौन कहता है भगवान काते नहीं बैर शबरी की जैसे खिलाते नहीं अच्युतम केशवम कृष्ण दामोदरम राम नारायणम जानकी वल्लभम अच्युतम केशवम कृष्ण दामोदरम राम नारायणम जानकी वल्लभम थैंक यू सो मच Thank you, Sandhya ji. Very nice, and welcome back. Good to have you back. Beautifully sung. Loved it. 
yeah this bhajan is big but i don't want you guys you know bore you with the long bhajan oh, that's why i know hindi is so. not your first language still you pulled it off so thank you so yeah. much yeah <laughs> i could manage <laughs> okay. thank, thank you thank you so much thank you so much for that yes pal ji all yours and then we have the yeah. ashin as well so please go ahead thank you sandhya ji pal ji radhe radhe please go ahead radhe radhe okay so this uh, particular bhajan is for our upcoming visit to vrindavan so okay yes. <laughs> Please. Okay. Kai do kai do beda pari radhe al beli sarikar kar do kar do beda pari radhe al beli sarikar radhe al beli sarikar radhe al beli sarikar kar do kar do. मन चल रे वृंदावन धाम राधे राधे गाएंगे मन चल रे वृंदावन धाम राधे राधे गाएंगे राधे राधे गाएंगे श्यामा श्यामा गाएंगे राधे राधे गाएंगे श्यामा श्यामा गाएंगे तेरे पूरण होंगे काम राधे राधे गाएंगे तेरे पूरण होंगे काम राधे राधे गाएंगे मन चल रे वृंदावन धाम राधे राधे गाएंगे ऐसी कृपा करो श्री राधे दीजो वृंदावन को वास ओ वृंदावन को पास दीजो हरि भक्तन को साथ ऐसी कृपा करो श्री राधे दीजो वृंदावन को वास थैंक यू सो मच राधे राधे ब्यूटीफुल थैंक यू सो मच आई थिंक दैट इज us up for the vindavan trip you know whenever we make it so beautiful bhajan thank you very much pal ji like always loved it and it was uh, for a change a different bhajan you know to to vindavan and fantastic okay dhyashni all yours now thank yeah. you pal ji beautiful singing pal ji thank you so much dhyashni ji radhe radhe please go ahead. Radhe Radhe, am I audible? Yes. Okay. It's a it's a song again taken from uh, Nritya Nata Bhano Shinge Pada Boli, which is written by Rabindranath Tagore. Okay. Okay. Yes. So I hope you all can understand. It's a little in Bengali, but I'll try to sing it. We understand your a... Bengali and English both, so please go ahead. Okay. 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 आज सच मोह मोह गाही पीका कोह कोह पूजा बनी दुख दुख दुहार पानी चाहवन मद बिल शीता फूल के ही अवन शीता अवश्य तनु लसिता मूर्छी जनु जाय आज मधु चातनी प्राणों मदनी आज मधु चातनी प्राणों मदनी शिथिल सब बाधनी शिथिल भैला वचन मृदु मर मर 
सांग पेरीच थर थर शिहरी तनु जर जर वचन मुहु आध फुट शत दल वायु भर टल मन आखी जनु धन ढल साहिते नारी जाए अलकी फूल का कपोली पारे मधुअन खशिया परू जाए शिरी फुट फूल दल यमुना बही कल कल I think you've got a sweet voice. We could get the bars, uh, though not the meaning, but very nicely sung. And uh, you have got a sweet voice. I must say that. So wonderful. I think we are pretty much on time. Then uh, it was a long session. Okay, what? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Siniji. Uh, she sang so sweet, just like Rasho Gulla Misti. Rasho Gulla. Ami Rasho Gulla Khavi. <laughs> okay. Let me sing a couple of lines from Maharaji. Um, I thought I'll sing that. So I'll do that. I'll not take two. I know it's 10.28, so I'll not take more than two minutes on this. Nand lal pyaare Yashoda dulaare Nainu ke taare तिहारी मनुहा प्यारे करु में तिहारी मनुहा आशा का बंधन टूट न जाए लगन मिलन की छूट न जाए आशा का बंधन टूट न जाए लगन मिलन की छूट न जाए ओ गिरिधारी ओ बनवारी कृष्ण मुरारी सुनी ले दीन पुकार ओ प्यारे प्यारे यशोदा दुलारे नैनो के तारे करु में तिहारी मनुहा ओ प्यारे करु में तिहारी 
thank you radhe radhe more lines but some other day all right thank you then hope you enjoyed the session yes monica ji wanted to you wanted to sing as well please go ahead monica ji radhe radhe everybody nidhi ji i'll sing tomorrow but i just wanted to thank everybody who had their cameras on and sang this is like a satsang this devotion devotional segment is like a satsang every day right uh, you get to share your bhavs and i am so grateful to be here and so grateful to you know people who switch on their cameras and sing and that you know share their bhav and everything thank you thank you very much thank you thank you for thanking monica ji and yes, <laughs> it is a it's a beautiful segment um, i look forward to it and so many people come forward turn on their videos and the bhavs are so palpable and thank you manisha ji pal ji sandhya ji pretty much everybody manish ji and then there ashini everybody uh, they chimed in and i look forward to this segment so thank you so much everybody for that that's icing on the cake right we are mixing devotion also with philosophy now so that helps great so look forward to seeing you tomorrow we will continue on this discussion and we'll talk about some of the practical tools tomorrow on i think something related to mind i'll i'm yet to think about it so stay tuned okay so thank you so much have a good rest of your day and great rest of your evening i'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow radhe radhe thank you so me. much nitin ji thank you so much radhe radhe for another awesome session and thanks to all of you for wonderful participation radhe radhe stay blessed we'll see you tomorrow see you all tomorrow radhe radhe